So if you have purchased groceries lately, it probably does not come as much of a surprise that the cost of food is on the rise. The average Canadian family is expected to spend about $700 more this year on groceries than you did last year. So our next guest is going to help us keep our grocery bills at bay in a new series we're calling Frugal Gourmet. Welcome back to the show, Sarah Lynn Koshan. Hi, Sarah. Hello, ladies. Thank you for having me. So happy to be here talking about my favorite thing, food. <laughs> it's our favorite thing that you do, food. <laughs> but you know, sticker shock is real. And it feels like every time I do the grocery shopping these days, the prices are climbing and they haven't stopped. So how much have prices changed over the last year? And what types of food are getting more expensive? So I'll just say, as someone who grocery shops essentially for a living, mm -hmm. I'm at a point where I'm offended looking at my grocery yeah. bill. Um, but not all items are created equal. Some have definitely seen a larger increase over the last year. Butter, for example, a total mm. staple in most kitchens, has seen a 10% increase in one year. And even if you're not a butter cooker like I am, if you're cooking with olive oil, you've seen a 12% increase there. Um, chicken, something that most of us are eating for dinner at least twice a week, is up 7.5% percent while eggs increased by six percent and get this bacon everyone's favorite breakfast food is now up by nine and a half percent and it's to the point now where i just leave the bacon at the supermarket because i cannot get over how mm -hmm. unaffordable it's become unbelievable okay so let's start to dive into some of these amazing recipes that you have uh, because we know that once all of these costs start to uh, rise up we've got to say well what can we make that's actually going to keep costs down so we're starting with a mediterranean frittata and in this dish i'm assuming frittata eggs but you just told us that they've increased in price so why for you is this dish still cost friendly so I have to say, even though eggs have definitely increased in price, they are still one of the most affordable protein sources out there. And I have always been a huge proponent for breakfast for dinner when it comes to yeah. saving money. And the frittata is such a beautiful way to do that. You can basically put anything in it. In fact, I call this the whatever is in your refrigerator frittata because <laughs> it's essentially just a melange of whatever's been languishing in my fridge, thrown into the skillet seasoned a little bit, and then I add my eggs to it. Um, it becomes a really protein-packed dinner, and the family will absolutely love it. So in this case, I had some pepper, some kale, threw that together with some Greek seasoning and a sprinkle of feta cheese, and I think I made something really special. Mm. Hey, so Sarah Lynn, though, everyone has their own secret on how to get their frittatas perfect. So what's your secret on how to best cook this dish? So that is a very good question. There are two things. So for me, it's all about adding a splash, splash of cream to your eggs. Ah. The cream gives you this almost like um, quiche-like texture. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is just keeping your oven temperature really low. So I cook this at 350 degrees. The worst thing is eggs that have been overcooked. Yeah. Not delicious. No, you want to keep it nice and low and slow, and you'll get something that you'll feel really good about. So eggs are one of the things that have gone up in price. Uh, the next item involves your next dish. This is a stir fry. I have some bacon here in front of me. And you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. bacon has gone up by nine and a half percent. So is there an option where we can swap out bacon in our dishes to make it more frugal? So it's sort of wild because the price of bacon, like we talked about, has skyrocketed. But the price of pork has remained pretty on par. And in fact, pork remains one of the most inexpensive cuts of meat at the supermarket. Mm -hmm. So here I created this delicious Thai inspired pork stir fry using some ground pork, which is super inexpensive. And I cooked that up with a little bit of fish sauce, some soy sauce, brown sugar and lime juice. And what you end up with is the most amazing sort of sweet and savory offering. I actually also added some Thai red chilies for a little bit of heat, but yeah. those are totally optional. Mm -hmm. I served it up with some tangy cucumber salad, which adds a nice freshness and crunch. And honestly, Lainey, I feel like this is one of those dishes that you could totally get behind. I think you would absolutely love it. Yes, I could do this every day of the week, <laughs> this yeah. dish in particular. This is good. It hits all the marks mm -hmm. for you, for yeah. sure. Uh, Sarah Lynn, these are great flavors, but what if you don't eat pork? Do you have a plant-based option that could work. Absolutely. So you can use the same flavor profile and use some tofu and some mushrooms instead. So cook those down together and you get this really beautiful texture and a nice umami flavor from the mushrooms. If you're not a pork fan, you could also swap in ground turkey or ground chicken here as alternatives and it would still work really, really well. 
Okay, great. So we're going to stick with chicken because your next dish is garlic and herb chicken legs. Sounds like this would be a great uh, family meal. So how do we get the best bang for our buck with this dish? Okay, so you might not believe it, but when you head to the supermarket and you're choosing your cut of chicken, the least expensive cut at the supermarket are whole chicken leg quarters, like the ones you see here. So these are the quarters where the thigh and the drums are still attached. And if you can believe it, these per pound are $4.50 less than boneless mm -hmm. skinless chicken breasts. Wow. So you're getting a huge savings here. And what's crazy is that it actually has a ton more flavor. This is really tender yeah. and the skin gets really, really crispy. Here I just marinated my chicken legs in a little bit of olive oil, some smashed garlic and some dried herbs. And I've created absolutely to die for chicken that the whole family will love. You can serve this up with some rice if you want to, or one of my favorite affordable side dishes, mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That is such a mystery to me because you know what? Like the leg is the only part of the chicken, in my opinion, worth eating. So I don't know why it's <laughs> cheaper, but I mean, not complaining. Hey, let's go back to those potatoes though, Sarah Lynn, because I do love a side of potatoes and I need oh, to know, yeah. what is your secret to getting them like so fluffy when you're making them mashed. Okay, so there's two secrets to really incredible mashed potatoes. Okay. The first is heating your milk and cream before adding it to your potatoes. Because if you add it cold, you'll get these gluey, gloopy potatoes. Oh, That's not delicious. Okay. It helps you cool your potatoes down. Yeah. And then the second thing I love to do is use a potato ricer. Are you familiar with this tool? No. Um, it's, it's an essential in my kitchen. And basically, it's like this sort of... Uh, a clamp, oh, essentially, and you like fill a it with your cooked press potatoes. for potatoes. It is. Thank you, Lainey. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's like a garlic press for mashed potatoes. You put them in here, you push them through, and what they what it does is it removes any lumps, and you end up with the fluffiest, most delicious mashed potatoes you've ever tried. Plus, it's a really affordable I need tool. One. It's like Oh I'm, my gosh, mm. I, I think that's like my whole takeaway. I'm, I'm, I'm doing all these recipes. I'm gonna order class. one tonight, I'll yeah. order one for you. Thank you. Okay, up next, another spin on chicken with your pesto chicken yoki. So tell us about this, it already sounds delicious. How do you make it frugal though? Okay, so the secret here is actually using rotisserie chicken that's pre-cooked from the supermarket. Ah. And I've never heard the term loss leader, but basically what it is, is a rotisserie chicken is considered a loss leader for the supermarket, meaning they're willing to take a loss on it to bring you into the store so that you're buying other more expensive items. So rotisserie chicken, if you can believe it, is usually even less expensive than uncooked chicken meat. In oh. this case, I use my rotisserie chicken to cook up this 15 minute meal that will totally blow your mind. Basically, it's a combination of some chicken broth, cream, and some pesto sauce. I use some store bought gnocchi, which is really inexpensive and super delicious. And then I just piled in my rotisserie chicken, a little bit of frozen spinach, because sometimes frozen veggies can be cheaper than fresh. And what you end up with is something you guys are not going to believe. Like, seriously, it's one of those run, don't walk to the kitchen and drive. Oh, I love that. Okay, I'm thinking I'm going to do that <laughs> for the fam tonight. Uh, last but not least, a great vegetarian option here. You're going to end off with a black bean and sweet potato chili. This sounds like it has fall all over it. What makes this so special and so affordable? Absolutely. So this is batch cooking at its finest, which we know is always more affordable. Plus, gram for gram, vegetarian proteins like tofu and beans are still more affordable than their carnivorous counterparts. So this is one of those really, really great options for Meatless Monday. I also love it because it's got hidden veggies in it. And if mm. you can believe it, one of the few things that's come down in price in the last year is produce by six and a half percent. You never come down in quality, Sarah Lynn. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You. I just wish you were here so we could eat some of these creations, but hopefully next time we send you all the best. Thank you. And all of these recipes will be that we discuss will be up on our social media channels after the show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back.